An important question is when you have the joint distribution in the form of a joint PMF, um, that gives me the information about how those random variables, which are the components of the random vector, behave together. Okay, for instance, here I can see that when the component x1 is 4, I can see that how x2 behaves. Or rather, if if I uh, if I look at this, I can see that how x1 behaves when x2 is 5. Okay, the question is. Um, when I have the joint PMF, can I derive the what we call the marginal PMF of, let's say, X1, which, which is uh, essentially um, just the PMF of X1, okay? So when I have the joint distribution, can I derive how the random variable X1 behaves in general, okay? Um, well, the answer is yes, because, well, when you have the joint behavior, you can actually deduce the, the independent or not independent is not the right word, but individual behavior. So uh, let's, let's look at how we can do that. We are after this PMF, PMF of X1 at parameter X1. And by definition, as we know, that is equal to the probability that random variable x1 equals parameter x1. And I can write this uh, event as x1 equals x1, parameter x1, and x2 is anything. Let's say that I have the joint PMF of x1 and x2. Okay, when you write this uh, in this way, okay, so that is x2 is in the sample space of x2, whichever uh, set that might be. I can write this as x1 equals x1 and x2 equals a1, x2 equals a2, x2 equals a3, x2 equals a4. Well, because this is a discrete distribution, I can just list the, uh, uh, the, the outcomes or the potential values x2 can take. That means I can obtain this probability by adding up these joint probabilities for all values x2 can take. All values x2 can take, okay? And this joint probability, you see, by definition, is the joint PMF of x1 and x2. So the message here is, in short, if you uh, get the sum of the joint PMF of x1 and x2, with respect to all, pos uh, all possible values of x2, you obtain the PMF for x1, which we call the marginal PMF. And I will show you um, why it's called marginal, but we will have to wait for the example for independence for this. But that is the general idea. If you uh, sum this joint PMF, over all possible values of x2, you obtain the marginal distribution of x1. The same goes for the other way. If you sum this for all possible values of x1, you get the marginal distribution of x2. In fact, I can generalize this to more uh, dimensions. If you have a, a three-dimensional random vector, if you uh, sum these PMF values over all possible values of X3, you get the joint distribution of X1 and X2. And in fact, if you just sum this three component joint PMF with respect to, let's say, all possible values of X1 and X3, what you get is the marginal PMF of X2, okay? And for instance, here is a four-dimensional random vector. If you um, sum this random, uh, this joint PMF for all possible values of X1 and X3, you get the joint PMF of X2 and X4, which are, which are the remaining ones. Okay, so this is the general idea.